What's up YouTube? It's your boy Josh Reese. And today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite subjects in the whole world and that is how you can get into every single optometry school you apply to. Now, this is a topic that um I don't know, you might say at first really like me I could get into any optometry school. Well, if you haven't ruined it for yourself yet, I guarantee you that if you follow these steps that you will be able to get into, accepted by every single optometry school, then they'll want you. So, you know, optometry school, first thing, is not the same as medical school at all, or dental school even, where there's some um, at the top of the pack, like a John Hopkins or a Stanford that'll, that is only looking for the cream of the crop. There's actually only 23 optometry schools in the U.S., um, so what that means is there's not really one that is so far ahead of the other ones that if you apply to it, you think, oh man, I, this is just, I'm not going to get into this one. I'm just going to apply to it, you know, because just, you know, maybe, maybe I'll get in. There might be a few schools that think they're that way, but really when it comes down to it, um, everyone has a pretty solid shot um, at, at getting into every optometry school that they apply to. Now, the first thing I'd say that's most important is making sure that you apply early. So when the cycle comes, uh, and some schools don't follow the cycle, but most schools do, um, you need to make sure that you get your application in at least by, I'd say, September, October. But August at the earliest, right? August, maybe July sometime. Just to make sure that you are one of the first applications they look at. After they look at your application, um, they'll have you on their mind for longer and longer and longer. And let's say you weren't the most competitive applicant, that puts you so far ahead of the rest because they have more time thinking about you, looking at you, and more opportunities to make a decision and compare you against um, other people that applied at that time. Now, the second thing that I'd say that you um, need to make sure to do to get into every optometry school is to keep your GPA at least above a 3.4, 3.5. Um, now, honestly, if you have a GPA above a 3.0, every school is going to at least consider you or not throw your name away. But um, just try to keep your GPA above a 3.4, 3.5. Now, OptomCast has this thing where if you retake a class, they take your highest score. So this may mean you need to go back and retake a few classes or you need to, um, you know, just make sure that, that you take some classes later. That's actually one thing I wish I would have done that would have made my GPA a lot higher when I was applying is take the hardest classes later. Now for me, I ended up taking calculus one of my first semesters in college, but looking back, I suck at calculus. I should have taken it you know, my senior year last semester. So that way when I applied, my GPA wouldn't have been taken down by that class. Now other hard classes that came late anyway, like physiology, anatomy, um, they um, didn't affect my GPA at all. But my GPA would have been substantially higher if I would have taken those classes I knew I would have done worse at, at the, towards the end. Because even if they are prerequisites for optometry school, most optometry schools um, will just say, as long as you pass this with the C or above before you start, you're good to come. So that's my second one, is to keep your GPA at least above a 3.5. Now, the next one regarding the OAT is that you need to take the OAT. I want you to take it early and early enough that you know if you need to take it again before you apply in August. One misconception about the OAT is, oh, I need to take all of the classes um, that are on the OAT before I take the OAT. Like I need to take all the biologies, including anatomy, or I need to take um, both um, organic chemistries, both physics classes. And I say that's a pretty big lie because honestly, although there are those concepts on it, the OAT is not really testing you on those subjects. They're, 
The OAT is concerned about telling whether or not you have the critical thinking skills of a good optometrist, a good doctor. And so what you need to do is develop those thinking skills that they want you to have. Once you can walk through a problem like they want you to walk through it, it won't matter if that problem is about physics, biology, chemistry, anything. It just matters that you have the critical thinking skills of an optometrist. And now that's not to say that you will get everything right, but that is to say that you're gonna get a high score as long as you go through practice problems and all of those are competent in being able to look at a problem and practice it and be able to walk through it. Now, my biggest uh, advice for studying for the OAT is making sure you have a study group, people that think differently than you. Because to be honest, no one's going to have all of the critical thinking skills to get everything right. But if you put your heads together and go through practice problems with other people in your group, they're going to make up for the things that you lack and they're going to be able to help you connect the dots where you're not at in, let's say, a subject. You haven't taken anatomy, you haven't taken OCHEM 2, that's okay because those practice problems are going to be so similar to what you see on the test that you're guaranteed, uh, if you put in uh, enough time, to have seen something exactly like every test question that's going to be on the OAT. So as long as you get above a 300 on the OAT, you're good. You know, a higher score is better, will make you more competitive. Let's say you have a lower GPA or not as much of something else, that'll help out. But I'd say to get into an optometry school, they're just seeing, okay, do you have above a 300, maybe 310 to get into every optometry school? But they're going to look at that and they're going to say, great. You know, they they have what it takes. You know, uh, maybe they have some test anxiety, didn't get like a 390, but it's good, right? good enough to get into every school. Now, the next one I'd say is you just need to be pre-optometry. Now, what I mean by that is you need to know that you're going into optometry. You need to have a backstory that they can read and look at and say, this guy knows he's going to be an optometrist or this girl knows that she wants to be an optometrist in the future. They have done shadowing. They've thought about it. They have a good um, motivational essay that you write Um, if they can look at your application and say this person knows they're going to go to optometry school and be an optometrist you're in right if you have a letter of recommendation from an optometrist you've been to a lot or you shadowed a lot or you work for that is going to speak volumes because let's say even if you don't have a good gpa and you don't have a good oat score but they see an optometrist that has told them on their on your letter of recommendation, I want this person to come back and work for me when they're done with optometry school, they're going to take you. It doesn't matter if you have bad academics. They know that an optometrist who's done it all knows that you have what it takes and is confident enough to write you an outstanding letter of recommendation. They're going to take a chance on you. Now, you know, let's say you have a below a 3.0 GPA and below a, th- um, a 300 on the OAT, they might not get to that part of your application. So that's why you need to keep those, you know, not spectacularly high, but keep those high enough that they're going to read through your essay and read through your extracurriculars. And if you have an optometrist on your essay or on your extracurriculars and um, a burning reason in your essay, Um, you're going to have what it takes to get into any optometry school. Now, the last thing I just want to mention is connections. You need to have reached out to these optometry schools. Now, you know, you're not going to want to attend every optometry school, but pick two or three to get really close to the advisors at the school. Um, reach out to your student advisor. They might have their emails or even you can, it's on the website of most optometry schools, their um, recruitment advisors or um, things like that. And just shoot them emails. Say, hey, I have this GPA. What can I do to get it higher? Or, hey, I have this many extracurriculars. What can I do to make me more competitive? And you'll actually become pretty good friends with some um, either faculty or people on the acceptance team there 
And that way, when they see your name on an application, they don't have to think, oh, who is this person? They know, oh, I've been waiting for this person's application. I can't wait to review it. And that is just the attitude that you need them to have when they look at your um, application. Because honestly, if you're just a name and a stack of papers, you're not going to be that, you know, they're not going to have as much of a connection to that application. But when they know you, when you've video chatted with them, when you've emailed them, they're going to see your name, attach a meaning to it, attach that you want to be there enough to have reached out. And if you have everything else, some extracurriculars, you know, good letter of recommendation, OAT scores that are decent, GPA that's decent, they're going to know you are a future optometrist and have what it takes. Now, um, the last little bit I want to warn you about is I'd say save your money. Don't apply to every school because if you follow this criteria, you're going to get into the schools you want to. I personally only applied to two schools because um, I knew the application process enough that I knew the chances of getting in are high enough that I didn't need to apply to other schools. So keep that in mind as you're going through this application process. Um, Go ahead and like this video if you thought it was worthwhile. And um, yeah, consider subscribing so I can uh, put out more informational videos about my journey through optometry school and uh, and the application process. Thank you so much for uh, watching and hopefully you can um, get into the optometry school of your dreams. Thanks. Bye.